A Stroll by Guy de Maupassant, taken from the Project Gutenberg ebook of Maupassant Original Short Stories, ebook number 3090. This reading is based upon a translation by Albert M. C. McMaster, A. E. Henderson, Madame Casada, and others. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. When old man Lara, bookkeeper for Messieurs Les Bouz and Company, left the store, he stood for a minute bewildered at the glory of the setting sun. He had worked all day in the yellow light of a small jet of gas, far in the back of the store, on a narrow court as deep as a well. The little room where he was spending his days for forty years was so dark that even in the middle of the summer one could hardly see without gaslight from eleven until three. It was always damp and cold and from his hole on which his window opened came the musty odor of the sewer. For forty years M. Lara had been arriving every morning in this prison at eight o'clock, and he would remain there until seven at night, bending over his books, writing with the industry of a good clerk. He was now making three thousand francs a year, having started at fifteen hundred. He remained a bachelor, as his means did not allow him the luxury of a wife, and as he had never enjoyed anything, he desired nothing. From time to time, however, he tired of this continuous and monotonous work. He formed a platonic wish. Gad, if I had only an income of fifteen thousand francs, I could take life easy. He had never taken life easy, as he had never had anything but his monthly salary. His life had been uneventful, without emotions, without hopes. The faculty of dreaming with which every one is blessed had never developed in the mediocrity of his ambitions. When he was twenty-one, he entered the employ of Messieurs Le Bouz and Company, and he had never left them. In 1856, he had lost his father and then his mother in 1859. Since then, the only incident in his life was when he moved in 1868 because his landlord tried to raise his rent. Every day his alarm clock, with a frightful noise of rattling chains, made him spring out of bed at six o'clock precisely. Twice, however, his piece of mechanism had been out of order, once in 1866, and again in 1874. He had never been able to find out the reason why. He would dress, make his bed, sweep his room, dust his chair, and the top of his bureau. All this took him an hour and a half. Then he would go out and buy a roll at Le Heur Bakery, in which he had seen eleven different owners without the name ever changing, and he would eat the roll on his way to the office. His entire existence had been spent in the narrow dark office, which was still decorated with the same wallpaper. He had entered there as a young man, an assistant to Monsieur Brumet, and with the desire to replace him. He had taken his place and wished for nothing more. The whole harvest of memories which other men reap in their span of years, the unexpected events, the sweet or tragic loves, adventurous journeys, all the occurrences of a free existence, all these things had remained unknown to him. Days, weeks, months, seasons, years, all were alike to him. He got up every day at the same hour, started out, arrived at the office, ate luncheon, went away, had dinner, and went to bed without ever interrupting the regular monotony of similar actions, deeds, and thoughts. Formerly, he used to look at his blond moustache and wavy hair in the little round mirror left by his predecessor. Now, every evening before leaving, he would look at his white moustache and bald head in the same mirror. Forty years had rolled by, long and rapid, dreary as a day of sadness, and as similar as the hours of a sleepless night. Forty years of which nothing remained, not even a memory, not even a misfortune, since the death of his parents. Nothing. That day, M. Laurent stood by the door, dazzled at the brilliancy of the setting sun, and instead of returning home, he decided to take a little stroll before dinner, a thing which happened to him four or five times a year. He reached the boulevards, where people were streaming along under the green trees. 
it was a spring evening one of those first warm and pleasant evenings which fill the heart with joy of life monsieur laurent went along with his mincing old man's step he was going along with joy in his heart at peace with the world he reached the champs elysees and continued to walk enlivened by the sight of young people trotting along the whole sky was aflame the arc de triomphe stood out against the brilliant background of the horizon like a giant surrounded by fire as he approached the immense monument the old bookkeeper noticed that he was hungry and he went into a wine dealer's for dinner the meal was served in front of the store on the sidewalk and consisted of some mutton salad and asparagus it was the best dinner that monsieur de Ra had had in a long time he washed down his cheese with a small bottle of burgundy had his after-dinner cup of coffee a thing which he rarely took and finally a little pony of brandy when he had paid he felt quite youthful even a little moved and he said to himself what a fine evening i will continue my stroll as far as the entrance to the bois de boulogne it will do me good he set out an old tune which one of his neighbors used to sing kept returning to his mind he kept on humming it over and over again a hot still night had fallen over paris monsieur Lerat walked along the avenue de bois de boulogne and watched the cabs drive by they kept coming with their shining lights one behind the other giving him a glimpse of the couples inside the women in their light dresses the men dressed in black it was one long procession of lovers riding under the warm starlit sky they kept on coming in rapid succession they passed by in carriages silent side by side lost in their dreams in the emotion of desire in the anticipation of the approaching embrace the warm shadows seemed to be full of floating kisses a sensation of tenderness filled the air all these carriages full of tender couples all these people intoxicated with the same idea with the same thought seemed to give him a disturbing subtle emanation at last m barat grew a little tired of walking and he sat down on a bench to watch these carriages pass by with their burdens of love almost immediately a woman walked up to him and sat down beside him good evening papa she said he answered madam you are mistaken she slipped her arm through his saying come along now don't be foolish listen he rose and walked away sadness in his heart a few yards away another woman walked up to him and asked won't you sit down beside me he said what makes you take up this life she stood before him and in an altered hoarse angry voice exclaimed well it isn't for the fun of it anyhow he insisted in a gentle voice then what makes you she grumbled i've got to live foolish question and she walked away coming monsieur Lerat stood there bewildered other women were passing by near him speaking to him calling to him he felt as though he were enveloped in darkness by something disagreeable he sat down again on a bench the carriages were still rolling by he thought i should have done better not to come here i feel all upset he began to think of all this venal and passionate love of all these kisses sold or given which were passing by in front of him love he scarcely knew it in his lifetime he had only known two or three women his means of forcing him to live a quiet life he looked back at the life which he had led so different from everybody else so dreary so mournful so empty some people are really unfortunate and suddenly as though a veil had been torn from his eyes he perceived the infinite misery the monotony of his existence the past the present the future misery his last day similar to his first one with nothing before him behind him or about him nothing in his heart or any place the stream of carriages was still going by in the rapid passage of the open carriage he still saw the two silent loving creatures it seemed to him that the whole of humanity was flowing on before him intoxicated with joy pleasure and happiness he alone was looking on tomorrow he would again be alone always alone more so than any one else he stood up took a few steps and suddenly he felt as tired as though he had taken a long journey on foot and he sat down on the next bench what was he waiting for what was he hoping for nothing he was thinking how pleasant it must be in old age to return home and find the little children it is pleasant to grow old when one is surrounded by those beings who owe their life to you who love you who caress you 
who tell you charming and foolish little things which warm your heart and console you for everything and thinking of his empty room clean and sad where no one but himself ever entered a feeling of distress filled his soul and the place seemed to him more mournful even than his little office nobody ever came there no one ever spoke in it it was dead silent without the echo of a human voice it seems as though walls retain something of the people who live within them something of their manner face and voice the very houses inhabited by happy families are gayer than the dwellings of the unhappy his room was as barren of memories as his life and he thought of returning to this place all alone of getting into bed of again repeating all the duties and actions of every evening this thought terrified him as though to escape farther from this sinister home and from the time when he would have to return to it he rose and walked along the path to a wooded corner where he sat down on the grass above him about him everywhere he heard a continuous tremendous confused rumble composed of countless and different noises a vague and throbbing pulsation of life the life breath of paris breathing like a giant the sun was already high and shed a flood of light on the bois de boulogne a few carriages were beginning to drive about and people were appearing on horseback a couple was walking through a deserted alley suddenly the young woman raised her eyes and saw something brown in the branches surprised and anxious she raised her hand exclaiming look what is that then she shrieked and fell into the arms of her companion who was forced to lay her on the ground the policeman who had been called cut down an old man who had hung himself by his suspenders examination showed that he had died that evening before papers found on him showed that he was a bookkeeper for messieurs le Bouz and company and that his name was la race his death was attributed to suicide the cause of which could not be suspected perhaps a sudden access of madness the end of the stroll by guy de maupassant read by roy schreiber